Hello, I am Minister Christopher A. Darby, and I'm honored to facilitate this week's Bible lesson. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24 I want to thank God and the Holy Spirit for their presence today. I also give thanks and honor to our pastor, Moderator Emeritus J.A. Molan, for giving me this opportunity to teach. And thanks to the other ministers, officers, and the members for your prayers and support during these studies. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for giving me my health and strength, wisdom and understanding of your word. I pray now that as I decrease, that you will increase. Use me, I pray, as your instrument today to teach your people. I give you praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The topic of today's lesson is laying up treasure in heaven. Laying up treasure in heaven. Our scripture text is Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. This is a practical lesson. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In the introduction today, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 10 through 16, Solomon described the problem with earthly treasures. He tells us that money and abundance do not truly satisfy. The abundance of the rich prevent good sleep and often hurt the owner. Riches perish through misfortune and cannot be taken with us when we die. I like the analogy that my grandmother once revealed to me. She says you have never seen a hearse torn a U-Haul trailer, meaning that you cannot take any of these things or stuff with you when you die. In today's lesson, Jesus commands us to lay up treasures not on earth, but in heaven. Not that it is wrong to have earthly treasures per se, but our focus should be on laying up treasures in heaven. In this lesson, I'll explore why our focus should be on laying up treasure in heaven and also how do we lay up treasure in heaven. Some reasons to lay up treasure in heaven. First of all, treasure on earth is insecure. Material things are perishable. Material things are subject to theft. There's also the possibility of loss due to inflation, stock devaluation, bankruptcies, faulty investments, and etc. On the other hand, treasure in heaven is secure. Neither moth nor rust destroys because all treasures in heaven are imperishable. Thieves cannot break in and steal because our treasures are securely guarded. The text reminds us that our treasure is where our heart will be. Where is our heart? That is where our affections, our hopes, and our dreams will be. In contrast, if our treasure is on earth, our hearts will experience much disappointment. As things for which you have affection decay or one day destroyed by fire, and as things in which you find your primary joy are suddenly gone through things like theft. If our treasure is in heaven, our hearts will not suffer great disappointments. For our treasure is incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. Nothing can take our treasure away from us, for it is reserved in heaven for you. It is also kept by the power of God through faith. Whatever happens on earth will not devastate us. 
When these words are taken to heart and applied, the storms of life would not overwhelm us because we built our foundation upon the words of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 27 it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. We must keep our eyes good, and understanding the metaphor used by Jesus, the body likely represents the soul or inner man. The eye likely represents the gaze of the soul or the heart of man. The word good in Greek means simple, single, and uncomplicated. The word bad in Greek means wicked or evil. In the scriptures, the expression evil eye is used to mean envious and covetous. Explaining the metaphor used by Jesus, if the heart or gaze of the soul be good, single in its love for the things of God, then one is filled with light, goodness, righteousness, and truth. But if the heart or gaze of the soul be evil, full of envy and covetousness, then one's soul is filled with darkness, selfishness, wickedness, and falsehood. Thus, the need for Jesus' warning to guard what goes in your eye. Example what you allow your eyes to dwell upon Remember, there is such a thing as the lust of the eyes. To be rich toward God, free from covetousness, note Jesus' warning in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And note also his conclusion in Luke chapter 12, verse 21. It says, So he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Paul likewise warns of the danger of materialism or covetousness. Those who desire to be rich fall. How do they fall? Into snares and temptations. They fall into many foolish and harmful lusts. They drown in destruction and prediction. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, from which some have pierced themselves with many sorrows. We ought to make God our master because no one can serve two masters. A master by definition demands total loyalty and we are unable to please two masters at the same time. Such is certainly true with God. Mammon is evidently no different. We have to choose between God and mammon. And when wealth is coveted and becomes the priority in our lives, it becomes a God. So the choice becomes one as to whether we shall worship the one true God or be idolaters following after a false God. Choose to serve God. As Jesus would later say, seek first the kingdom of God. Do this and God becomes our master. Since we can't serve two masters, this effectively eliminates mammon from being our God. For such reasons, Jesus tells us why to lay up in treasure in heaven, and Jesus also tells us how to lay up treasure in heaven. He tells us 
by giving to the poor. Jesus connected giving to the poor with laying up treasure on two occasions to his disciples in Luke chapter 12 verses 32 and 33 and to a rich ruler Luke chapter 18 verses 18 through 27. And Paul also connected sharing one's wealth with laying up treasure in heaven in 1 Timothy 6 17 through 19. To be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, and storing up a good foundation for the time to come, and to lay hold on eternal life. Now I want you to understand that eternal life cannot be purchased, for salvation is by grace through faith and not of works, and we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. And as children of God, we are joint heirs with Christ, recipients of every spiritual blessing in Christ. But giving to the poor helps us to lay hold on eternal life by freeing our heart from covetousness and by reminding us when our true reward will be received. God wants us to enjoy what we have. Yet proper enjoyment requires a heart forgiving. Thus, we are to work with our hands, not just to provide for our families, but also for others in need. So I ask you today, are we laying up treasure in heaven? Jesus told us why, and Jesus also told us how. Have you given much thought as to how you can be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, store up a good foundation for the time to come and lay hold on eternal life. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you once again for another opportunity to share your word today as we have expounded upon the text, laying up treasure in heaven. We pray that something has been said today, Lord, to help each and every one who hears this message, Lord, to realize the importance of laying up treasure in heaven and not on earth. We pray now at this time for our pastor and his wife, their family. We pray for the Greater Peace Church family. We also pray today, Lord, for those who are watching this lesson today by way of live stream. We pray that if there is anyone who has not accepted you as their personal savior, that they will accept you today by confessing with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in their heart that you have raised them from the dead and they may at this very instant today be saved. God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you and we give you the praise, the glory and the honor in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, until next time, God bless you and keep you is our prayer.